Hi, my name is Savannah Alexander, and I will be presenting our qualitative work on embedding financial services in settings families frequent and trust, such as pediatric clinics and schools. Child poverty is associated with adverse outcomes across the life course and disproportionately burdens families of color. It is imperative for pediatrics to directly intervene on child poverty with financial services to mitigate its pervasive and inequitable impact on child health and development. This intervention is needed because free financial services, such as tax preparation that provides access to the earned income tax credit, are effective in improving economic and health equity, but they are underutilized. It remains unknown why low-income families underutilize free financial services. So, as pediatrics begins to embed financial services in clinic and community settings, qualitative research is needed to understand the factors necessary for financial service acceptability and use to improve uptake and effectiveness with the long-term goal of mitigating racial and socioeconomic inequities in child health and development. To this point, it is critical to include families of color who may identify unique factors. As such, we interviewed parents and guardians from an urban community school for low-income families who are primarily of color. Using an asset-based approach, we aim to understand parents' experiences and aspirations around economic mobility and their impact on parents' perceptions of the acceptability and use of financial services embedded in frequented and trusted settings. We found that families experience multi-level barriers to economic mobility. Despite these barriers, parents are already proactively working to build economic mobility by empowering the next generation with knowledge, skills, and assets, and resiliently pursuing economic goals. As a result, parents will accept empowering, non-judgmental, ex expert, and trustworthy financial services that contribute to their existing efforts. To move from acceptance to use, financial services must be effectively publicized, accessible, and supportive. Let's unpack those last two themes on acceptability and use. Participants shared they would accept a financial service that empowered them to create newfound intergenerational economic mobility, achieve their economic goals, and no longer rely on government assistance programs. Some participants stipulated that financial service personnel would need to have common lived experiences. This desire was sometimes born from experiences with the intersectional stigma of being black and in poverty. However, being non-judgmental without having common lived experiences was sufficient for others. Participants also described the need for financial service personnel to be financial experts who can navigate all multi-level barriers to economic mobility. Finally, participants explained that their community would accept a financial service if it were endorsed by trusted community organizations and or interpersonal support networks. This desire was sometimes in response to distrust born from being stigmatized by financial service personnel for being Black and in poverty, or from the collective distrust among the Black community based on historical and current racism. To move from acceptance to use, participants underscore the need for effective publicity, as several of them were unaware that these that free financial services like financial coaching or free tax preparation even existed. Participants also explained that financial services need to be integrated into diverse, accessible platforms such as clinics, libraries, and mobile applications. Lastly, participants illustrated the need for financial services to support parents in poverty by helping them overcome fear, shame, feeling unheard, and cognitive overload, which arises from competing demands and results in limited capacity to engage with financial services. There are three main takeaways from our findings. First, financial services must build upon families' existing efforts to achieve economic goals and empower the next generation with knowledge, skills, and assets. This bi-generational strengths-based approach has the potential to strengthen families' trust of healthcare systems and financial services, which is particularly relevant for communities of color for whom in institutional distrust remains a critical concern. Secondly, to further instill trust, embedded financial services must have the expertise to navigate fam all of families' multi-level barriers to economic mobility. For example, institutionally, government assistance programs restrict income and asset building. In response, financial services can provide access to economic mobility programs that prevent families from losing public benefits. Financial services also need to provide consistent holistic support to address 
parents and her interpersonal and individual barriers to economic mobility, such as experiencing domestic violence or cognitive overload. To this point, Mobility Mentoring is a program that aims to improve parent executive function in order to improve economic mobility. And a recent study found that embedding it within an income qualified early childhood education program improves child development outcomes. Finally, to facilitate parents' awareness of and ability to access acceptable financial services, they need to be effectively publicized and easily accessible via multiple platforms. In conclusion, if our findings are applied to the implementation of services, it could lead to increased use of embedded financial services with the potential to reduce racial and socioeconomic inequities in child health and development in the long term. Thank you.